Hello everybody, my name is Jim and this is a challenge that I want to commit to in 2024. It might take all of 2024 for me to read these, but these four books are books that I'm very excited to get into eventually, now or later, and they all revolve around adoption and foster care. If you watched one of my videos, I think it was one of my earlier wrap-ups where I wrapped up the Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. I talked a little bit about how I was looking for books about adoption because I myself am adopted. I'm super excited to get into these four books and I really hope I like them. So the first book on my list is What I Carry by Jennifer Longo. For readers of Robin Benway's Far From the Tree, we're going to get to that later, a powerful and heartwarming look at a teen girl about to age out of the foster care system. Growing up in foster care, Muir has lived in many houses, and if she's learned one thing, it is to pack light. Carry only what fits in a suitcase. Toothbrush? Yes. Socks? Yes. Emotional attachment to friends, foster families, a boyfriend? Nope. There's no room for any additional baggage. Muir has just one year left before she ages out of the system. One year before she's free. One year to avoid anything or anyone that could get in her way. Then she meets Francine and Kira and Sean and everything changes. So this is one that I'm very interested in because it does focus on the topic of aging out of the system, which is very difficult for any child in foster care um, to be thrust out into the world because they don't really have that backing a lot of the time. I do want happy stories, so <laughs> I'm I'm kind of hoping for a very happy ending from your. Also, this cover is beautiful, so I don't want to set my expectations too high. On Goodreads, this sits at a 4.23 star rating. It has 6,101 ratings and 1,024 reviews. And of the four books that I've chosen, this one has the fewest amount of ratings and reviews by quite a bit. Before We Were Yours is a historical fiction by Lisa Wingate. Memphis 1939, 12-year-old Rill Foss and her four younger siblings live a magical life aboard their family's Mississippi River shanty boat. But when their father must rush their mother to the hospital one stormy night, Rill is left in charge until strangers arrive in force, wrenched from all that is familiar and thrown into a Tennessee Children's Home Society orphanage. The Foss children are assured that they will soon be returned to their parents. But they quickly realize the dark truth. At the mercy of the facility's cruel director, Rill fights to keep her sisters and brother together in a world of danger and uncertainty. Aiken, South Carolina, present day. Born into wealth and privilege, Avery Stafford seems to have it all. A successful career as a federal prosecutor, a handsome fiancé, and a lavish wedding on the horizon. But when Avery returns home to help her father weather a health crisis, a chance encounter leaves her with uncomfortable questions and compels her to take a journey through her family's long-ridden history on a path that will ultimately lead either to devastation or to redemption. Based on one of America's most notorious real-life scandals in which Georgia Tan, director of a Memphis-based adoption organization, kidnapped and sold poor children to wealthy families all over the country, Lisa Wingate's riveting, wrenching, and ultimately uplifting tale reminds us how, even though the paths we take can lead to many places, the heart never forgets where we belong. This was a long synopsis. <laughs> but yeah, so this is based on a true story um, of a an adoption agency kidnapped children from poorer households and sold them, gave them to wealthier parents. Huge scandal. It was something I was aware of, but it's not something that I've really read about or looked into much. My mom actually read this book, and when I told her that I was thinking about reading it too, she, she turned to me and she was like... <gasps> Oh my gosh, that was so interesting. So she loved she loves historical fiction and she's probably the reason why <laughs> I started reading and enjoying historical fiction. I've been on a bit of a historical fiction dry spell this year. And so I kind of want to get back into it and I feel like this is a really interesting story to dive back in. And so 
excited about this one. And plus, it's set in Aiken, South Carolina, which is, um, I'm not from Aiken, but I am from South Carolina originally. So this book has a 4.4 star rating on Goodreads, 577,333 ratings, and 43,007 reviews. So for it to be above four stars and have that many ratings and reviews is pretty spectacular. The next book is Foster by Claire Keegan. A small girl is sent to live with foster parents on a farm in rural Ireland without knowing when she will return home. In the stranger's house, she finds a warmth and affection she has not known before and slowly begins to blossom in their care. And then a secret is revealed and suddenly she realizes how fragile her idol is. Winner of the Davy Burns Memorial Prize, Foster is now published in a revised and expanded version. Beautiful, sad, and eerie, it is a story of astonishing emotional depth, showcasing Claire Keegan's great accomplishment and talent. So this book was on a few people's lists that I watch on BookTube religiously, and it's a short book. It's only 89 pages based on this Goodreads paperback description. It should be a quick read, and I'm looking forward to reading it and joining my BookTube buddies in having read it and being able to review it. It sits on Goodreads at a 4.33 star rating. It has 59,677 ratings and 7,317 reviews. And then finally, the one that I think I'm looking forward to the most, this is the first one that I put on my list uh, is Far From the Tree by Robin Benway, which was mentioned before in What I Carry by Jennifer Longo. Being the middle child has its ups and downs, but for Grace, an only child who was adopted at birth, discovering that she is a middle child is a different ride altogether. After putting her own baby up for adoption, she goes looking for her biological family, including Maya, her loudmouthed younger bio sister who has a lot to say about their newfound family ties. Having grown up the snarky brunette in a house full of chipper redheads, she's quick to search for traces of herself among these not quite strangers. And when her adopted family's long buried problems begin to explode to the surface, Maya can't help but wonder where exactly it is that she belongs. And Joaquin, their stoic older brother, who has no interest in bonding over their shared biological mother, after 17 years in the foster care system, he's learned that there are no heroes and secrets and fears are best kept close to the vest, where they can't hurt anyone but him. These three characters by themselves seem to present a wide range of feelings about being adopted, being in the foster care system, feelings about family and what it means and where you fit. Uh, I don't want to, you know, talk about it too much, but there are some expectations in reading this, especially around Joaquin, that I want to explore a little bit more or that I hope is explored. Um, so, yeah, I'm super excited about this one. This is the one that I'm most excited about, and I really hope I like it because... Like I said, again, about the other ones, setting expectations high, I'm doing it, and uh, <laughs> I just don't want to be let down by this one, or any of them, for that matter. This one currently sits at a 4.26 star rating on Goodreads. It has 43,156 ratings, 7,305 reviews. So, if you guys want to join me and read these books as well, the links to their Goodreads pages are in the description below. Click on those to read more and see some spoiler-free reviews. If you want to, head on over to your local retailer and purchase these books if you're feeling bold and brave and you want to do it. Or if you'd rather play it safe, you can always head on over to your library or use your library app to check them out if they're available. Otherwise, I've been Jim. You've been great. Happy reading.